welcome all of you in the last class in fact last one or two classes we discussed lot about spinnakos and polarization transfer techniques in the polarization transfer technique i told you about uh, possible ways one is selective population saturation selective saturation or selective population inversion both are possible i showed that a taking example both in the homonuclear case and in the, and in the heteronuclear case two coupled spin system we took and when i took example of proton with carbon i showed that when i saturate one of the proton signal one of the proton peaks one of the transition corresponding to proton then the carbon 13 two transitions enhance the signal intensity of course with the uh, they were out of phase uh, anti phase minus 5 and plus 5 intensities okay and we also understood after this thing how we can do the polarization transfer we can apply it by bringing in another factor called what is called spin echo in the sense we put a 180 pulse at the center of this uh, nf sequence and we wanted to ensure that chemical shift is also refocused at the same time transfer is also going to take place there is the enhancement in the signal intensity so this is one of the biggest advantages of nf i told you always nf takes place only between the coupled spins and the magnetization transfer takes place from an, from anti coherence to anti coherence so we created the anti coherence for the proton applying after after applying a 190 pulse when I, after exactly 1 over 2j it became anti phase and then we apply simultaneously 90 pulse on both proton and carbon the coherence from proton jumped into carbon 13 that's what we observed and we calculated the intensity and we know that how it works out everything diagrammatically and by a vector diagram we try to understand everything fine and afterwards when we understood there is a, you know, the, because we need to do the decoupling of the thing, thing we also wanted to give a delay after this thing so that the anti phase become in phase in character so minus 5 minus 3 and plus 5 should become plus 3 and plus 5 so that we can do the decoupling this, this also we should, uh, discussed but however there are two points which we, we need to be addressed one is suppression of the natural abundance signal and converting anti phase to in phase for decoupling in fact we did this we understood this how to do this when we were trying to understand the spin echo this decoupling we can ad adapt that here two points we have to address suppression of natural abundance and converting anti phase to this thing in phase signal both this can be addressed individually there is no issue at all for suppression of the natural abundance carbon 13 signal we have to carry out two experiments one last one, one proton pulse the detection pulse we apply 90 degree pulse uh, for coherence transfer from proton to carbon that once you have to do two experiments the last proton pulse one should be plus 5 90 plus 5 other is 90 minus 5 two experiment you have to do and what happens when you do this two experiment we will see how it works at we saw the pulse sequence how it is working everything here already we discussed quite a bit up to this we have discussed at this point what is going to happen we will see at that point okay at that point f just before applying a 90 degree pulse 90 pulse the sig proton signal two vectors are anti phase to each other alpha and beta components are anti phase to each other all right just after 90 pulse i told you they were in the anti phase to each other in the y axis and applying a 90 degree pulse takes them back to z axis one alpha component goes to plus z and beta component comes to minus z that we saw and then at f what happens to carbon 30 signal this is as far as the proton is concerned just before 90 degree pulse one is plus 5 other is minus 3 that is the carbon signal we saw that signal intensity for c alpha is plus 5 c beta is minus 3 ok just immediately after the anti pulse what happens to carbon 13 signal and then again what will happen is but till now uh, at when we are looking at the proton the coherence was in the x y uh, along the y axis or x axis whatever the axis you have chosen whereas we have carbon 13 still was in the z axis now what is going to happen after applying 90 degree pulse you brought the spin vectors of carbon 13 into y axis now again they are anti phase because coherence has transfer has taken from taken place from proton to carbon 
and C beta is minus 3, C alpha is plus 5 from Z axis and minus Z axis you brought it to minus 5 and plus 5, minus 3 and plus 5 is the component R light. This is one experiment with 90 degree plus y. What happens if you do the identical experiment with prot proton pulse 90 degree minus y? So, what is happening is this is 90 plus y but for as usual at the point f just before I application of 90 degree pulse we have the signal like this that is exactly similar to before. Now, we are applying a 90 pulse minus y. When you apply 90, 90 degree minus y remember in the previous case h alpha was along z axis h beta was along minus z axis now they get reversed h beta is along z axis h alpha has come to z minus z axis that is what happened. So, if this magnetization got inverted it because we are applying a minus y pulse. Further what is going to happen for the carbon 13 just before 90 pulse it was like this because we have not touched it yet you know. So, now what we are going to do is because of this it is happening like this as soon as I apply 90 degree for the, for the carbon 13 what is happening is the C alpha which was along plus y became came to minus y and C beta which was along minus y came to plus y this is what happens. See when you apply 90 degree pulse I do the two experiment once with plus y and, and once with minus y 90 degree pulse this is what is going to happen when you apply simultaneous 90 degree pulses we are in the, you know changing the magnetization from C beta C alpha in two type experiments once it is along C alpha is along plus y and other time it is minus y similarly C beta also once in minus y second time it will be on plus y. Now, with plus y 90 degree pulse this is the magnetization of carbon 13 and with minus y this is what it is. Now, in both the experiment the natural abundance carbon 13 is detected with constant phase that we are not touching we are only transferring magnetization to this thing by from proton to carbon 13 for one of them natural abundance carbon 13 still continues with the constant phase. The first FID and the second FID we are going to do the experiment recorded with two, two phase, phases of 0 degree and 180 degree for the receiver that is what we have to do. At what we have to do after doing this experiment subtract experiment 1 with experiment 2 ok 90 degree y pulse experiment 1 with experiment 2 we will subtract see what is going to happen this is 90 degree y pulse subtract this with this one what is that you are going to get when you subtract this one and net intensity of each of them you calculate here minus 3 and minus of plus 5. So, this is going to be minus 5 8 c similarly the other one plus 8 minus of minus 3 which is going to be 8. So, minus 8 and plus 8 is the intensity the two transitions have intensity minus 8 and plus 8 gone up 8 times ok. So, that is ok I mean uh, it was 2 ok 4 times at least it is gone up. The natural abundance carbon 13 will give a constant phase signal in both the experiment this is a transferred magnetization carbon 13 natural abundance is not transferred it remains same. The elimination of natural abundant carbon 13 signal you have to change the receiver phase one by 180 degree to eliminate it. How do we do that? First we do one experiment 90 y, 90 y with 90 y pulse we have signal intensity 5, 5 and minus 3 for magnetization which correspond to h alpha carbon magnetization carbon vector corresponding to h alpha orientation and carbon vector correspond to h beta, h beta orientation they have plus 5 and minus 3 orientations with 1 pulse plus 90 y pulse. And what we are going to do is with the natural this is equal to what we observed is equal to natural abundance magnetization which is natural magnetization of carbon 13 which is not transferred. So, it is intensity 1 1 because it is a doublet we will 0.5 point where we will take 1 1 and then transferred magnetization is of course, anti phase minus 4 and plus 4. Why did I take minus 4 because gamma is 4 times smaller. So, we know it has to be 4 times gain. So, we have I have written transferred magnetization has to be minus 4 and plus 4 anti phase natural magnetization is identical 1 1 this is with 90 pulse do another one with the 90 minus y pulse then what is going to happen this is natural magnetization, but here this gets reversed now because we are applying 90 minus y pulse here natural magnetization 
natural will of the carbon 13 will continue to be in the similar phase constant phase that phase won't get changed, uh, disturbed whereas these two signal will the phases get reversed once this is negative this is positive second time this is positive and this is negative now you already got the idea what we can do if we take the difference of the two experiment when you take the difference of the two experiment what is going to happen the signal correct coming from the natural abundance carbon 13 gets cancelled out because they are of the constant phase only the transferred magnetization is retained this is what happens because when you take the difference of here this and this gets nullified cancel out whereas this will get added up when you take the difference minus of the, this one minus of minus plus 4 this is minus 8 and this is going to be plus 8 this is what we are going to see minus 8 and plus 8 here the advantage is we have eliminated the natural abundance signal from the carbon 13 and we have retained only transferred magnetization from proton to carbon 13. Okay. Now, some interesting things do happen here. The signal intensities, what will happen to signal intensities for CH2, CH3, etc. in inept experiment? So far, we are, we, are, we are dealing with only CH carbon and carbon 13 when it is coupled to single proton will be a doublet. So, we are dealing with only doublet, we got minus 3 plus 3, minus 3 plus 5, all signal intensities, antiphase, we knew how to convert this into the give a delay and afterwards it is going to become converted to in phase we can do the decoupling everything we understood. For CH2 groups what is going to happen? The signal intensity will be like this one dimensional carbon 13 signal will be in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 that is correct there is no, no difference as soon as you put the inept experiment in the inept experiment what happens central peak do not process and there is no transfer of magnetization for that that will not get precise at all that won't get transferred any no magnetization get transferred only for our components outer components which are in anti phase there is a signal okay that's where as i told you the transfer of magnetization takes from anti phase to anti phase only these two will get the signal and how much is the gain in the signal you can find out from this this is the gain in the signal intensity is Okay, so, if you put that value, the intensity of the CHT peak are minus 8, 0 and plus 8. Central peak will not get uh, any say, magnetization transfer, whereas outer components will have minus 8 and plus 8 intensity. This is what happened for a CH2 carbon. What about the CA3 carbon? CA3 carbon intensity is 1331. In a normal carbon 13 spectrum, coupled to 3 protons. That we know, intensity is 1331. Now, what we will do is in the inept experiment, it is analogous to CH carbon, where it is attached a single proton. Instead of double head, now we have a quartet with uh, two lines, 1, 3, 3, 1 ratio, two, you know, processing in the, uh, uh, processing in the, uh, uh, two, uh, two orientation, one clockwise and the anti-clockwise, fast moving and slow moving will be there. Two will be fast moving, two will be slow moving. Again, they are anti phase like this. And if you calculate the intensity ratio for inept experiment, it turns out to be like this for the carbon 13, 4 peaks. And if you look at the intensity, it is minus 12, 12, 12, 12. Very easy. Okay. This is the intensity you are going to get minus 12, minus 12, plus 12, and plus 12. These two are minus 12, minus 12, these two are plus 12, plus 12. So it is very easily you can understand for the, this one. The signal gain should be 4 times. When there are two carbons, it became eight times. When there are three carbons, it is 12. 12. That is all. So, gain is the, this is very easily depends upon the number of protons attached to carbon. That is how C A 3 group will come. Now, the coupled inept an experiment, if you see, it looks like this. Coupled inept experiment, an example of a molecule called coumarin. This is a molecule. We have only CHS here, no CH2 or anything, only no one, but of course there are quaternary carbons here also. When you do coupled inept, that means we are not removing the coupling, that means after the inept, there is no delay is given. Okay, no delay is given, and we are not going to acquire the uh, signal with decoupling. And of course, in which case, if you do the inept, the coupled inept, this is what it is, because there will be anti-phasing character. 
we don't need to worry about decoupling means antiphase is still okay because there is no question of getting signal nullified only when you want to decouple then this will get nullified all the opposite negative into positive negative gets cancelled out but that is not going to happen because we are looking at the coupled inept same thing if you do the gated decoupling where it is coupled but still get the gain in the intensity because of the gated decoupling look at this one this is the what the comparison intensity ratio there is small gain in the intensity but if you look at this thing there is small gain in the intensity of course if you look at the signal to noise ratio you have to see okay and then with this all right so far we have not done the decoupling we have been doing only we what we did is suppress the a natural abundance carbon 13 signal we can do what is called a refocused inept the same in ex inept experiment with a to the 180 pulse in the middle to for as a spinner core for refocusing chemical shifts we can extend further this is the refocused inept the refocused inept will circumvent the problem of decoupling due to antiphase character this is what one of our this thing which we already discussed in the spinner core you know when we discussed there is nothing new in this all we have to do is we have to give a delay after the last pulse which is equal to 1 over j 1 over 2 j what then you are going to see what is going to happen here up to this is known this is up to f is regular inept for the refocus inept we are going to give an, like a spinner core sequence there are two delays in between with 180 pulses on both proton and carbon what is going to happen for this now let us see what is going to happen especially for this part up to this we know we have already understood at the end of the first delay especially here at the, then the doublet component of ch spin system would have acquired a relative phase difference okay that's true they would have acquired some relative phase difference 180 pulse on the x nuclear refocus the chemical shift 180 pulse on proton inverts the alpha and beta spin states of x vectors it will invert it because it is coupled to that so it is a doublet if we, in as i told you already applying 180 pulse will invert alpha and beta labels it labels get interchanged that's what is going to happen now what is going to happen the magnetization corresponding to c alpha which is coming because of the h alpha becomes now m magnetization corresponding to h beta magnetization of carbon coming because of h beta now becomes magnetization vector coming because of h alpha this is what the 180 pulse has done it just inverted the spin states that's all it is done okay this is what i said you know it invert it inverts the alpha and beta labels that's what it did during the last delay what will happen in the last delay that delay to 180 pulses and delay is the last delay the last delay two carbon 13 vector continue to process clockwise and anti clockwise as always you know when there is a delay you give and then they continue to process one is fast moving other is slow slow moving one goes clockwise other goes anti clockwise and after certain delay they again come back to the x axis this is what you understood in spin echo when you understood it gets refocused again with this delay and this is what we have to understand how it happens at the at the end at the f the regular inept at the end of the regular inept we understood carbon 13 vectors are anti phase minus 3 and plus 5 that we know after the first delay they started revolve you know evolving like this faster slow moving components are moved by some angle for some delay you apply a 180 pulse now what is going to happen the labels get interchanged h alpha and h beta label gets interchanged and after second delay what is going to happen they will move and then come back and then get refocused along the plus x axis after another delay so the, again it is delay everything is given first of course 180 pulse is to invert the alpha and beta spin states and then second delay we ensure these vectors continues to move after getting inverted and then get refocused along the x axis this is what is going to happen after f all right now we can do the decoupling of proton with carbon 13 why because you can see both are in phase vector if it is in phase vector decoupling is possible 
only if it is anti phase vector there is a issue then signal gets nullified ok we can do the decoupling. You may ask me a question we said there is a delay, but what is the refocusing delay we have to use of course, we have already discussed this when we were trying to do the spin echo with decoupling even a simple inept experiment we saw and we, we saw that when the signal is anti phase what is going to happen if do not if you do not give the delay it gets nullified we saw that and then how did you overcome this issue by giving an extra delay that exactly we have we also know how much delay we have to give everything, but we will again understanding the what is the length of the refocusing delay that depends upon we have to choose the optimum value that depends upon the J coupling between carbon and proton one bar we are not worried about long range coupling length uh, this period has to be calculated based on one bond coupling ok and the delay of 1 over 2 j gives the maximum refocusing maximum signal only for system like I x where like 2 protons are coupled like C a car 2 heteronuclear coupled like carbon and proton in a such a situation if you consider C h if you put delta is equal to 1 over 2 j you get maximum refocusing that is what is going to happen. If you put the delay equal to 1 over 2 j there is a refocusing for this type of things. For C h though when do you get the maximum refocusing? See C h j coupling is between these two it is you know two vectors if in fact it is half j one is this side one is this side and your uh, uh, on resonance is at the center. For C h 2 central peak is here and other two peaks are equal to j moved apart you know from fast moving slow moving component already not half j is 1 j. For C h 2 systems the refocusing is maximum when delta is equal to 1 over 4 j the delay has to be 1 over 4 j. And if all the multiplicities are there CH2, CA3, etc. And you do you, you know all these the different carbons attached to different protons will have different J couplings. And you cannot keep on varying the delay, delay and according to J for different CH, CH2, CH3 carbons. What we have to do is we have to worry arrive at the compromising setting of the value. Delta approximately equal to 1 over 3 J is an appropriate value more or less is approximate it is may, there is the, no preferred value, but approximately 1 jch is 150 hertz is taken and one third of that days is given as the delay that is appropriate for all the multiplicities of CH, CH2 and CH3 being refocused. So, the refocusing net now you can use this to edit what is called the spectrum based on the multiplicity of the carbons. How? we already discussed CH carbons if you put delta is equal to 1 over 4 j all the carbons CH, CH2, CH3 carbon appear as positive signals exactly at 1 over 4 j all carbons are positive signal. At 1 over 2 j if you give only CH signals are seen others are not seen. If delta equal to 3 fourth of j interesting thing is CH and CH3 signals are positive and CH2 is negative very interesting is it going to happen at 1 over 4 j all are positive 1 over 2 j only CH signal is seen and at delta equal to 3 fourth of j we get positive signal for CH and CH3 and negative signal for CH2. So, now what you are going to do based on this phases of the signal you can identify different carbons compared to in fact APT we did that you know we, we saw that in the APT when exactly equal to 1 over j we 1 over 2 j we found that all signal CH, CH2, CH3 will be 0 and then only quaternary carbons will be seen and at 1 over j we found that only 2 of them are positive and other is negative we saw that CH2 is negative CH and CH3 were positive. But between CH and CH3 we were unable to distinguish which and which but here we can utilize this to find out very easily see these are the things now. Signal intensity I have made a table here of different carbons during refocus enough put a delta value is equal to 1 over 4 j CH is positive CH2 is positive CH3 is positive put delta is equal to 1 over 2 j instead of 1 over 4 
you will see only ch carbon other two will be disappearing put 3 4 of j this is positive this is positive this is negative this is the intensity pattern phases of different signal depending upon the delay delta all right this is what you will see variation of the 13 c signal intensity in the refocus inept as a function of delta this has been plotted as a function of delay time it is a, i have chosen only 3 for the uh, different values but here const continuously the values was varied delta and intensity for different carbons were plotted look at it at exactly equal to 1 over 4 j all are positive at 2 or 1 over 2 j then what is going to happen this ch carbon is and ch3 carbon and ch3 carbon both are zero it is coming going to zero exactly at zero whereas ch carbon is positive for 1 over 2 j go to 3 fourth of j now ch2 is negative both ch and ch3 are positive so using this you can identify different carbons you can also do, do get the decoupled spectrum you can do the decoupling by using this uh, you know refocus in at the same time by manipulating the delay you will be able to identify different carbons attached to different number of protons this is what it is you can compare the intensity how how beautifully inept works is being compared in a simple example for a molecule like this this is called chloroform in the chloroform we have only two new spin off nuclei heteronuclei carbon 13 and proton so if you look at carbon 13 obviously it is going to be doublet because of its coupling with proton i'll take a normal carbon 13 spectrum no decoupling no NOE nothing NOE i'm going to discuss after another one or two classes remember i told you earlier the NOE gives you signal enhancement of the signal intensity one way of transfer of magnetization like inept here you, you use j coupling there no j coupling it is only spatial proximity that's what i said we will discuss more about it later if you take a normal carbon 13 spectrum of cscl3 no noe no decoupling you get a doublet like this of this intensity same thing you do inept experiment not refocused inept just inept experiment in which we saw there is opposite phase we get doublet one is positive intensity other is negative intensity we don't do the decoupling if you do decoupling it gets nullified it is a coupled spectrum no decoupling same thing you do refocused inept what does refocused inept does it will convert this in anti phase into in phase that is all that is what happened again no decoupling as a consequence you still get a doublet that is also fine what we this we have to see this is the refocused inept what is the refocused inept this we are going to make anti phase as in, in, in phase plus we do the decoupling collapses multiplicity double light into a single light and we are going to get a single peak like this and this is a normal spectra without with decoupling and noise here without decoupling without noise here with decoupling and noise look at it there are different type of experiment has been done here to make a comparison look what where do you see the better signal we want to identify decoupled spectrum for attached to different carbons attached to different protons at the same time there must be gain in the signal intensity of obviously you will see the refocused inept with the decoupling gives you a better spectrum the intensity is positive and much better compared to conventional experiments this is a conventional experiment with decoupling and NOE here no NOE at all and this is what we have advantage there is a gain in the signal intensity here because of I am sorry And this is the see this is the signal intensity which is coming because of inept for a focus inept. And now we will compare this with the sensitive the inept with the direct detection of low gamma nuclei, some low gamma nuclei nitrogen 15, nitrogen 15 spectra of gram C D N S acquired with refocused inept refocus inept this is a inept experiment the normal nitrogen 15 no NOE this is a inept experiment where you see the enhancement of the signal intensity 
with decoupling. Fantastic experiment. So beautiful. You can see the nitrogen 15. Of course, NF experiment can be done to any other nuclei. Need not be carbon 13 or nitrogen 15. Enough to enhancement of and the rhodium 103 where the polarization is transferred from phosphorus in a molecule like this. Here there is no decoupling has been done because of its antiphase character. That is why you look at the antiphase. But here is the normal spectrum. See this is signal. So weak you will not be able to see anything. This is a simple inept antiphase character without any it is not a refocus inept. See already a gain in the intensity. In case if you do refocus inept with decoupling you get a better signal. See the advantage of inept. This is called a polarization transfer experiment where you take the magnetization from the abundant spin and giving to rare spin. In the previous example we took from proton and give to carbon and nitrogen. Here phosphorus is abundant. Take the signal from phosphorus and give it to rhodium. This is what we do. And of course you can compare the intensity of our different nuclei we can do the comparison. And if you do the comparison how much is the gain during polarization transfer and what is the maximum intensity gain you will get with NOE they can be easily compared. Polarization transfer from proton to heteronuclei like this for example in the case of rhodium 30 times enhancement of the signal you get for iron 30 for example silic carbon 4 times silicon 5 times nitrogen 10 times approximately and this is the advantage of this. So I of course depth is another called distortion dist enhancement polarization transfer I already discussed this this is one which uses to distinguish different carbons attached to different number of protons. This uses polarization transfer I told you when I explained carbon 13, but I did not explain polarization at that time. Now with the understanding of polarization transfer you know what is depth. So simply I will show you in the example of the depth sequence this is what we discussed and then intensity of the different carbons as a function of flip angle especially the last flip angle here on the proton and if you consider see how the signal is changing. At 45 degree all the signal are positive CH, CH1, CH3 at when it is 90 degree flip angle CH2 and CH3 are 0 and 135 degree what is going to happen CH3 is positive CH is positive CH2 is negative. This is how we can do the and I identify different carbons attached to different protons using depth. This with uh, I already show, discussed this during carbon 13 I just told you advantage of polarization transfer. So, the compared to APT the advantage of depth is you can still identify different carbons attached to protons, but there is a gain in the intensity because of polarization transfer coming to that. So, this is the advantage of depth versus APT both the experiment are used to identify different carbons based on the multiplicities. Depth requires less experimental time because there is a it requires only because of polarization transfer, but accurate phase of the decoupler channel is needed. APT is easy to set up, requires calibration with a perfect 90 degree pulse and no need to wait for carbon 13 T1 to repeat experiment. But one disadvantage is depth is it cannot distinguish between CH and CH3 whereas in the depth experiment I showed you we could do that. So, this is what it is. So, I just wanted to summarize this and with this polarization ex transfer experiments have been completely covered. So, to in this what we said uh, discussed is we discussed about the refocused inept at the same time how do you separate the natural abundance carbon 13 we saw the gain in the signal intensity by doing two different type of experiment how, by once with the 90 degree pulse plus y and minus y take the difference we could uh, suppress the natural abundance carbon. With the refocused inept you are able to put a delay make convert antiphase into in phase so we can do the decoupling. So, we did that experiment and we saw there is a gain in the signal intensity. And of course, different depending upon the delay what you are going to use in the refocus part of the inept sequence. We can identify different carbons attached to different protons depending upon it is a 1 over 4j, 1 over 2j or 3 fourth of j. And then we can add, identify CH, CH to CH3 carbon based on this phases. See when so in some cases it signal is going to be 0 and other two cases it is going to be positive or negative based on that we can identify everything. I saw that polarization I, I showed you the polarization transfer is used in depth also. And I just show you one example what we discussed earlier about depth in carbon 13. Depth it takes the advantage of signal enhancement due to polarization transfer, but still you can utilize it to identify different carbons. There is, there is a subtle difference between APT and depth, both uses identify both are used 
only for identification different carbons attached to different protons. I hope you got the idea about polarization transfer, depth APT experiment, inept experiment, how we can use to identify different carbon. I told you about only proton carbon etc. but you can use it for any heteronuclei like nitrogen 15, any other thing you can utilize for polarization transfer. That is what also I said. So, with this I am going to stop from next time onwards we will go to a different topic called two dimensional level. So, I will stop here. Thank you very much.